Welcome to your favorite comic book channel on YouTube, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rudd. I'm going to be looking at Akira Toriyama's Sandland today, but first, got to let you guys know that we are a daily YouTube channel as of uh, this recording, and uh, we have more than a thousand videos that are out there live right now, so hit the little magnifying glass on the main page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel, give it a search, see if we talked about your favorite comics, and if we haven't, uh, then by all means put something in the comments and let us know what you suggest we cover on future episodes. We have a Patreon where the King of Kayfabers on the Patreon are hanging out with us in an exclusive chat room right now to completely mitigate the Kayfabe effect, which is when we show off a comic very often. It disappears off the aftermarkets. King Kayfabers are getting the cheapest copies. And we are going to be at Baltimore Comic Con uh, in... What, what are the dates again, Jimmy? September 8, 9, and 10. Without further ado... There is a new printing of Sandland, uh, t the Tanko Bond by Akira Toriyama, out there, published by Viz right now. Uh, it's in its fourth printing, and worth showing off now because uh, it was out of print for quite some time and was going for about 60 70 bucks on the aftermarket, but uh, showed up on you know the Amazon suggestion list, back to 10 bucks. went to the comic shops. The comic shops didn't have it. We could order it. And I said, well, I could order it myself, man. It showed up the very next day. Uh, this is the story that was serialized in the U.S. version of Shonen Jump in the first dozen or so issues, 11 or 12 issues, uh, which was a a amazing uh, because when that, when that magazine started to serialize, uh, it came out on a monthly basis, was the phone book size. Still not quite as thick as a single issue of Shonen Jump, but it was stacked with heavy hitters man it was a, uh, it was late period dragon ball so it would probably be like dragon ball z so a couple chapters of that sandlin was the new piece that i don't think was translated into english up to that point uh it was my first glimpse of naruto which became a fucking phenomenon it was a first glimpse of uh one piece in english which became a freaking phenomenon and is still going strong to this day I think there's going to be a Netflix show, live action or something, uh, pr pretty soon. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho showed up in, in those pages, and uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! So it was pretty well stacked. How did it get on your radar? I got Raijin comics to begin, and that was the weekly manga that was flipped and everything, so you read it in traditional order, and Viz was not going to rest on its laurels. Viz is like, we are the manga publisher, I'm I'm not quite sure, but but it fell it came onto my radar really rapidly that they were going to put out like a Shonen Jump, and with Raijin out weekly, I had the subscription. You know, pay two hundred dollars for for the thing because it's just so expensive to make books here here, here in the states. Uh, but it I was I was on it from issue one, but I do not have those issues any longer, dude. Uh, just through several moves through my twenties, you know that stuff came out when I was 20, 21. Yeah, we, we moved five, six <laughs> times then. Weeklies and phone books pile up. Absolutely. Like I, I had two bookshelves then, dude. And uh, it took a whole, it took a whole, you know, tier of, of a bookshelf. The reason I ask is, you know, like I'm reading comics at that point and I don't remember we were them, kicking it. them being on my radar exactly. And I wasn't that interested in manga at that time. You know, the stuff that would cross my path, I might look at something if it was recommended or whatever, but there wasn't a lot I was picking up in terms of manga. And I just wonder, you know, even as a, as a question for our audience, I'm curious, like, who was there when that stuff first kind of like... Because to me, those magazines, that's a big thing. But I also think it's something outside of the direct market in a lot of ways. And it may have been. I remember it came in a poly bag, and it would have extra goodies, kind of like how Wizard would cards and stuff. Because, like, Yu-Gi-Oh cards were... were uh, that, that game was being played plenty. And the cartoon was on on TV and all that stuff, man. But to me, the standout was uh, was Sandland to the point where you know I'm still working at the call center then, and uh, like I drew here. Let's play with the levels here real quick. This video is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Three different levels will give you access to our videos early, and at the King Kayfaber level, you'll get access to all of our videos first to offset the Kayfabe effect, and you sit in on the recording session, which really gives you a leg up. We are also working cartoonists. The best way to support cartoonist kayfabe is to buy our comics. And coming out in time for Christmas, Hip Hop Family Tree from Ed Piscor. 
500 plus pages collecting all of the Hip Hop Family Tree in one handsome volume, along with 140 pages of extra back material, notes, art that hasn't been reprinted before, new art created just for this volume. Red Room, Crypto Killers, is the latest series in the Red Room uh, universe. There are two volumes in trade paperback, and this third volume is being published right now. Issue 3 recently published, features Latchkey Kids, now known as Switchblade Shorties, which is Ed's ongoing daily comic strip. This is the first appearance, so you may want to add this one to your collection as a, uh, a key back issue. X-Men Grand Design is going to be collecting all three volumes into one edition, also in time for the holidays this year, uh, the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy. You can pre-order that one now. My latest comics, True Crime Funnies, self-published, featuring three non-fiction stories, including two wrestling stories, available on my website or my Patreon, young adult graphic novel, The Plain Janes, Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, featuring the homeless ninja on a skateboard, collecting eight complete stories. This is my action superhero series, and a new volume of Street Angel will be due out later this year in November, also from Image Comics. Get Princess of Poverty and Deadliest Girl Alive to have all of the Street Angel comics, and Hulk Grand Design, my contribution to the Grand Design mythos celebrating 60 years of the Incredible Hulk. And now back to the video. I'm not accustomed to drawing fan art, but I, I was at the call center, literally, I would... I would uh, print these up. These were made by uh, the RA at the Kubert School. Sean, Sean Clarity designed these things to do like very detailed roughs, small. So I wondered what that was. Yeah, so that you can um, do perspectives without you know needing to tape yardsticks together and things, and, and then you blow it up 167 percent, as per his lettering right here. So I would print up a bunch of these. You know, I, I made a template off a, a copy off of him up there and just made endless copies for myself. Uh, so at work, I would bring these and just draw stuff. And then on the way home, go to Kinko's, blow it up as needed, and then light box. I'm such a fan of seeing template stuff. You know, like if you look here, you've got your half rolled, your three rows, mm -hmm. very common. You can make your nine panel grids, your six, six panel yeah. grids very quickly with this. Yeah, totally. And and uh, I ran out of these. so So I made a modified one that I use to this very day. You see it on all my stuff, and it's totally based off of Sean's template. And by the way, we have some of that stuff available for free on our Patreon. We for, do. For people watching that are makers. So here's my little drawing of Beelzebub. Uh, and uh, I was making zines, you know, so like then you have to reduce it down to that half size of a uh, piece of 8.5 by 11 so that you, you yeah, know, that, looks good. that's what it would look like Both in print. Ways. Man, those inks are crisp. You making that with a pen nib, you think? Yeah. Can you feel you it? Feel it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking with brush, but I, I think I really got uh, stoked on, on the nib at that point. Six minutes into the vid, Jimmy. Should, should we crack <laughs> open Sandland a little Not bit? Not yet. No. We should flip it over and show that back cover because we were talking off, off screen about how much it resembles Jamie Hewlett. I think in color and cartooning. And again, anytime I say that, it's not to suggest somebody's copying somebody. No, sure. More of just like, there's a certain sensibility that I think works for figure art, cartoons, things of this nature. And that just speaks to me. I really like how that looks. There's a coolness and attitude, you know, like uh, Jimmy Hewlett has, has Fireball, uh, the, the racing comic where he's doing his version of like Wacky Racers and has all kinds of cool car designs. Toriyama is a master of designing vehicles and characters and stuff. And, and, and there's a very, uh, there's an exceptional tank that you will be seeing uh, in the pages of Sandland. By the way, on page one of this, or even a preface, I don't even know what that is. The very first page of this book, he talks about how hard it was to draw that tank. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> totally. So uh, the story is not too far from like Mad Max Fury Road in a lot of ways. You know, they live in the Sandland. There is a king who has the monopoly on on the water supply and gouges the, the, the people of, of, you know, the, the Sandland. And uh, these are the people, or demons should I say, who are going to uh, democratize that water supply. Uh, we, when I got back from Japan, we, we did, last time, we did a, uh, we unpacked an, a uh, Katsuhiro Otomo interview from the Art of Wall exhibit of the Akira joint. And Otomo was talking about how, like the weekly manga, it's not even a story. It's, it's just a formula. And Akira, Kira Toriyama is, is steeped in that formula. You know, he's, he did Dr. Slump first, which about 18 volumes, I believe. 
he did Dragon Ball, which is something like forty something volumes. You know, you here in this here in the states, we 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 carve it up. It's like eighteen volumes Dragon Ball, and then what thirty forty books for uh, Dragon Ball Z whenever Goku grows up. So he's steeped in the formula, but this is a one and done. This is a story with a beginning, middle, and end, and and uh, I dare say this is the masterpiece of uh, Akira Toriyama's man. It's very clear when you have when you have a post apocalyptic narrative. It's not hard to figure out what the stakes are. And uh, the great Aaron Sorkin in his master class would talk about, like, before I even get started writing something, I need an intention and I need an obstacle. And once I have those things, then I could hang baubles all over it. That's exactly what this is, man. We know what the stakes are. We know what is needed. And then through the next, you know, 200 pages, you get the baubles that are added to, to create complication in route to their goal. But the drawing is sublime. Uh, when it comes to, to manga, we're always a little nervous about showing too much off just because copyright laws are a little different in Japan than, than, than they are here, here in the States. And, and uh, Akira Toriyama does not need our help to, to, to sell any books. So uh, we're just going to show off some of the you know, more bomb, bombastic big imagery. We have little Beelzebub here, who's a demon that's about 2,500 years old. And uh, they, he and his homeboy, they're, they're getting by just fine, robbing and pillaging uh, people of their water and food supplies. But it's when this old human comes along who kind of evangelizes them on uh, an unlimited water supply that's available. That kind of piques their interest. And they go on that quest through the Fury Road, basically, to, uh, to find this water supply. Um, with that main kind of crux in mind, you start to develop the character of the the old guy. You find out that he was a general of of the the, the previous army that kind of created the Sandland, uh, just following orders. You know the banality of evil type shit. He was following orders, dropped a big bomb on this little community under the guise of them creating a future kind of atomic bomb, H bomb kind of thing. When in, in truth these demons were there, they, they sort of saw all, they knew all. That little community was actually creating uh, a system of uh, water creation out of like almost thin air. They were able to, to just create water, but what would have happened was that would have uh, diminished the uh, value of the water that the king controlled. So he had the army drop a bomb on this community to shore up his uh, in investments and stuff. So he's kind of, he's a Ronin, you know, he's a, he's a rogue, uh, soldier that's, that's trying to make good on, uh, he killed a lot of people, uh, you know, in the concussion of that bomb, like he, I think his wife died in that even. So there was a lot of casualties during that, that mission. And, uh, he is on a quest to kind of democratize that stuff and kind of overthrow the, the, the king. It's so funny to think of this stuff as fantasy cartoony stuff except that it's built on concepts like water shortages right that are extremely relevant you know what i mean like Absolutely. the furthest from fantasy a couple glimpses of the cool vehicles right amazing there was some some uh fear that this is a big giant bomb that was going to be dropped on the guys but it's actually and you could see it it's uh it's their kind of, uh, they drop this into, into the water supply. Like this is full of water and mm -hmm. up here is actually the vehicle. That's neat. So we'll see how that plays out. If you, uh, check out the pages, uh, the little Beelzebub absorbs the power of the night. Whenever there's like a big mission to go on. That's a fun concept. Yeah. Yeah. So the he, anti Superman. Yeah. He has to go, uh, sort of meditate and absorb the power of, of the night so that he can, uh, be effective and when you see the action sequences with these characters the storytelling is fucking magnificent uh the it's cinematic in its visuals in in toriyama's choices of camera angles and stuff it, it just it reads so so beautifully i think there is a uh, cartoon uh that is maybe an ova that that is coming out or might already uh, just be out. I saw it's like got a lot of CGI built into it. The inking is exquisite, you know, with the bold lines on the characters. And, and you could imagine when you have a vast sand land with plateaus and, and mountaintops, there's, there's a lot of landscape. 
and they always make sure I say they because I'm sure Bird Studio has has a hand in this to kind of thin out the the background lines. But it but it all feels good in total. You know, very often the uh, the backgrounds are very divorced from from the character drawings. Uh, it, the thing about Toriyama's work it's 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 all a solid whole. I always think that you should be able to tell day from night. Yeah. at a glance like you shouldn't need any real indicators or captions and i feel like based on the last page to this page pretty clear you know like i'm picturing this sun-baked dried out landscape where it's just white yeah you see no blacks in the background you know so that that helps it out uh, another sort of noteworthy thing when it comes to toriyama is that uh, there there is zipatone usage which uh is is not typically in uh, the dragon ball comics you know when he's putting them shits out at 17 pages a week uh, he's he's bare bonesing it as much as possible and uh, not really using zips that much, but I, I imagine that he put some uh, some apprentices to work to to throw some zips down on uh, on this this story. Speaking more to your heel lit stuff, right? It's about it's about the weight. It's about the attitude, posture, posture for sure. This will be like uh, one of the sort of uh, generals that was in the army at a lower level whenever our main guy was uh, heading up that mission to blow up uh, that, that small community. Uh, so he may or may not be swayed by the demons. Are you hesitant when you make comics to do panels like this? You know, where it's just your character a really simple composition. Right. I think they read so well, like like manga takes great advantage of this, but I can remember doing panels without backgrounds. Right. And it took me like years before I could do a panel without a background and not feel guilty or sure. like this is a shortcut. And in a way, those panels have that same effect. Yeah. But really useful is reading. Absolutely, man. You know, it creates that little pause. And usually when you have that, you have something bombastic about the, to happen afterward. Uh, when you're doing something that's weekly or on a very tight schedule that that becomes a, a tool in your arsenal yes i understand that part but i also think it's a tool in pacing like yeah. like there's a bunch of functional pieces of that too. you don't you don't need that stuff like uh we you, you set up your establishing shot something like this and then you don't need to have anything behind it you know it's a cool creature design yeah yeah i mean as you could tell we're getting toward to the end yeah. of the story so you have to pull out your big baddie looks good this is your big baddie for the for for the whole story, you can picture filling that in in black. You know the classic character design thing is like, does it work in silhouette? And that's a good looking silhouette. Toriyama, you know, he designed a lot of the characters for the Dragon Warrior games. Uh, just has such a neck. He he's that kind of cartoonist that uh, you know we all share a bunch of common traits. But then if you have are exceptional at like a couple other things, you become like one of those unicorn creators. He's absolutely up there. Uh, from from my taste, Toriyama is up there with Mobius and Otomo, and you know any any of those other kind of uh, legendary unicorn creators. That's a fabulous spread. This will be the uh, title page for. Actually, I don't think that's quite the last chapter, but. You can see, man, our boy is without his cape, without his goggles. Like, uh, he's he's been run through the ringer a, a, a little bit. Let me show you the main bad guy. Look at that fella. Hmm. And he would have been he would have been a general who was around, kind of giving the orders way back in the day whenever the big cataclysm occurred. So he's really the main bad dude. Are the parallels to Fury Road too great to ignore? <laughs> Every time I was reading this, man, I was like... I mean, even this guy's a bad guy feels like, uh, what's his name, Joe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just don't have a bunch of pregnant ladies getting milked. <laughs> <laughs> That's the original <laughs> part of Fury Road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, this video is more or less an announcement to let you guys all know that Sandland is finally back in print if you didn't get it in its original American iteration in Shonen Jump or if you didn't get one of the first three printings they were very expensive because uh, supply and demand is 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 key you know people wanted this book and it was not available but as of April I guess uh, as of the Indicia here 
It's back in print. It excited me to see that it was available because it's been a long, long time since I read it. You know, I divested myself of those Shonen jumps and I never uh, grabbed the, the trade paperback. Uh, so I jumped at the chance to get my hands on it. And I, uh, I implore everybody else to uh, check this comic out, give it a shot, buy it if you think it looks good. If you're curious to read it, maybe it's at your library, but definitely worth your time. Yeah, this is one I will buy the next time I see it. Good to go, Jimmy? I am. Okay, favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. Cartoonist Kayfabe is a daily YouTube channel, and we may have already covered some of your favorite comics. So hit the little magnifying glass on the Cartoonist Kayfabe page, pop in your favorite comics into the search field, see if we talked about your faves, man. And if we didn't, please put something in the comments to let us know what comics you, you're digging, and uh, that could rise to the top of our reading list. Uh, I do make a list of those things. Like totally. I have my list of potential pools, so whenever I see those comments, I do add add books to the list. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, we have a cartoonist cafe Patreon for the King Kayfabers to mitigate the Kayfabe effect. Uh, three different levels of support there. And uh, ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. So, Jimmy, can you please let the people know what you got? Yes, absolutely. Plain Jane's first young adult graphic novel. These are books that are in print that you guys can pick up now uh, as you're watching the videos. Street Angel Deadly Squirrel Alive from Image. This was out of print for a while. It's back now. Eight complete stories and available wherever books are bought and sold. Hulk Grand Design, one of the uh, most audacious things I've ever made. I believe this is out of print or damn near out of print. So pick this one up sooner rather than later because no guarantee that it'll ever even be reprinted, uh, let alone when that might happen. True Crime Funnies, this is a self-published comic. It'll be out at Baltimore and available on my website shortly thereafter. You can buy the PDF now on my website or join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download and read it for free. And Street Angel Princess of Poverty will be out later this year from Image Comics. And combined with Deadliest Girl Alive, this will collect all of the Street Angel comics that aren't in Deadliest Girl Alive. So together they are a set that completes the Street Angel comics so far anyway. The time has come. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is getting closer and closer to comic shops. Uh, this is collecting all four volumes of the Hip Hop Family Tree series. Uh, to date, it collects 140 pages of additional material that was that was not published in those first four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree. Coming out in October, this is going to be a heck of a, uh, a Christmas item this holiday season, but it's not going to be the only Christmas item that I have uh, available in stores soon. The X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback is going to be coming out in November, collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design work, uh, which is uh, semi out of print at this point. Uh, so it'll be a way to get your hands on all of it in one clip. Red Room is my current comics project. There are two trade paperbacks out right now, Red Room Antisocial Network and Red Room Trigger Warnings. The latest Red Room series is called Crypto Killers. And issue three of Crypto Killers has a backup feature showing off my daily comic strip characters in their kind of prototypical form. My strip is called uh, Switchblade Shorties, and I'm serializing it now exclusively on my own Patreon. But I'm going to be putting it out on uh, to the wider world probably January 1st of uh, 2024. So, so keep an eye out. If you want to read it ahead of time, hit up my Patreon. Jimmy, what else do we have going on? You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, uh, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to support the channel, given those marching orders will be on our way. Read more manga.